There's lots of hobbies out there that uh, rely on you having a really reliable source of power. They rely an awful lot on battery power as well as getting some electrical source at places like campsites and things like that. But they need battery power for things like lighting and for keeping things cool. Now, amateur or ham radio is one of those hobbies that relies quite often on battery power. And uh, in our hobby, in the amateur radio hobby, quite often people use battery power to uh, operate on a portable basis out, out away somewhere from, from the home, maybe up by the beach or in a quiet countryside spot somewhere, or in the car. Now with that, there are two different types of batteries that people tend to use. Uh, you've got the LifePol 4 batteries, which is a newer technology, and we've got the lead acid battery. Now in general, lead acid batteries are a decent source of power. Uh, they're certainly very affordable, uh, they're very plentiful, there's lots to, to shop around and buy, and also they're pretty durable. The cons are they can be quite heavy, in fact they are heavy in terms of weight, especially when we compare them in a minute to the LifePo 4. Uh, they tend to have a, a lower lifespan than the LifePo 4 batteries. In fact, as we'll see in a minute, quite considerably so. And uh, you have to be careful how much you actually uh, discharge these batteries. If you uh, do what we call a deep discharge and take it down to about 20 or 30% of available charge left, then um, that's not doing it any good. And in fact, can very much lessen the, uh, the lifespan of your battery, and in fact, maybe even reduce its overall capacity as well. One advantage the lead acid battery does have over the LifePo 4 is cost. So the Uasa battery, for example, is the one of the ones I use. 36 amp you can see the cost there, a lot, uh, you know, it's a reasonable amount, but not too prohibitive. Compare that then to the Ultramax, the 36 amp hour equivalent, which is the LifePo 4 battery, and you can see that the cost is uh, quite considerably more. However, with uh, LifePo 4 batteries, where they really win, or one of the main reasons they really win over lead acids is because of their relative lightness of weight. So let's look at an example here. Uh, the Oasis battery, uh, the one that I use, the 36 amp hour, that has a capacity of, uh, a weight I should say, of about 11 kilograms. And the, the Tracer battery I use, the weight of that is just 2.9 kilograms, so just over a quarter of the weight of the Oasis battery. And you might think, well, okay, the Oasis battery is a 36 amp hour battery, the, tra the Tracer is a 24 amp hour battery. So that might, uh, you know, give you some reason why the, the, uh, the lead acid uh, Oasis is going to be slightly more uh, weighty than the Tracer. But um, as we'll see in a minute, that isn't necessarily a great guide in terms of how much capacity you truly have with these batteries. Another win for the LifePo 4 batteries over lead acid is the amount of um, charging cycles you can get from them. So... Uh, again, typically with a uh, lead acid battery, you get around three to four hundred charging cycles over its lifespan. With a LifePo 4, you're basically times in that by seven, eight, or maybe ten times. Uh, the Tracer battery I've got is marketed as having around three thousand charging cycles, and that's typically the figure you'll see for LifePo 4 batteries, maybe slightly below or slightly more. But you're talking into the thousands rather than the few hundreds you see with lead acid batteries. So another win for the LifePo 4 of the lead acid battery is in discharge capability. So if you're using a lead acid battery, for example, uh, for whatever reason you're using it for, it's probably good to have some form of little voltmeter in line. Uh, it doesn't have to be very expensive, just something that gives you an indication, okay? Because once you go below a resting voltage, you know, 12 volts remaining, for your lead acid battery, then really you're approaching the point there around maybe 50 or 60% discharge. That's when you want to really stop using it and recharge and replace it with a different battery if you need to keep on using something. Because as I said earlier, if you over discharge a lead acid battery and you continuously do so, then you're going to damage its long-term uh, capacity, all right? And you're not going to do it any favors at all. And you're probably going to lessen the, uh, the usable life of that battery for you. Now, when we compare that to the LifePo 4 batteries, uh, they very much have a completely different approach. Effectively, uh, you have, for way over 80, perhaps 90% of use, a, a, an available voltage of way in excess of 12 volts, 12.5, 12.6, maybe up to 12.8 volts for an awful long time throughout the, uh, the use of that battery. Um, probably not advisable to over uh, overflog a LifePo 4 battery, but as you know, you can see, it certainly has a great deal more advantage in terms of how it discharges uh, its, it, its, its energy. Because with a lead acid battery, you basically have a general degradation of the actual 
um, or, or the actual power it provides. With a LiPo 4 battery, it very much just continues going and eventually drops off the cliff. It's a bit like digital TV with a LED asset with a uh, LiPo 4 battery. Great picture until you hit that interference and it drops off a cliff. It's a bit like that in terms of its uh, available output as well. So the LiPo 4 then wins out in terms of the amount of charging cycles you get from it. Uh, in terms of the uh, the weight, it's a much lighter battery, and also it gives you a far better discharge capability as well, as we've just seen. Now, of course, the one thing that does go against it a little bit is its cost. We compared earlier the two 36 amp hour batteries, the pretty decent Uasa AGM at 36 amp hours, compared with the Ultramax, the LifePo 4. However, if we're looking at the long, uh, so the lifelong cost of these batteries, there's another way of looking at it. So, if we say, for example, that a lead acid battery costs you £50 and it lasts, say, 300 charging cycles, well, that comes a cost of around 17p a cycle, all right? Now, if we look at the LifePo 4 battery, that might cost you £160. That's, you know, over three times the cost of the lead acid equivalent. But if that's going to last you 3,000 cycles, then we're looking then at a cost of around 5p a cycle. So, in other words, there's... There's more than one way of looking at this. Sure, the initial outlay is going to be a lot more with a LifePo 4 battery, but in terms of the, the long, sort of the lifelong cost, in terms of how much usage you get out of it, how much bang for your buck you get, in other words, then the LifePo 4 is pretty hard to beat. Click on this link if you want to find out more about how I've used LifePo 4 batteries in the past and how well they've done for me. And click over here to subscribe. It'd be great to have you on board. And uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up too. Take care now and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.